This road interchange was designed using cubic splines and this improvement scheme at Ryby Castle in County Durham was also designed using the spline technique. In fact, it was one of the first in the country to be designed using this technique. In this case study, we hope that by looking at road design that you'll get some insight into the application and use of splines. One of the people responsible for the computer methods at Durham is Gordon Crane. The A688 is a, is a strategic east-west route from Durham in the east to the M6 in the west. Increasing traffic flows, increasing heavy lorries just mean that the road now is entirely inadequate for, for what is demanded of it. This alignment as you see it, it was never designed, it just followed the original field boundaries and that is as we have it today. There's no clearance at the side of the road, there are overhanging trees, there are overhanging boughs which causes the buses and heavy lorries to move to the crown. It's dangerous. On other sections of the road there is a boundary wall which means that people give quite a lot of clearance and this means that an already narrow road becomes virtually single way. That's a typical example of the, the traffic that is using it, as you see it now. Traffic is moving slow, people can't overtake, the vertical and horizontal alignment are very bad, there are steep grades, the sharp curves mean that people can't overtake, it's, an, it's a real traffic hazard. Well, the requirements of the new road are fairly obvious. You need a, a horizontal and vertical alignment of gentle curves, which allow fast motoring speed of about 100 kilometers an hour. It allows people to overtake, plenty of visibility, plenty of clearances at the side to accommodate heavy vehicles. And also, the gradients must be fairly shallow to ensure that heavy vehicles also don't hold up the traffic and they can maintain speed as well. Road improvement is a pretty standard problem and computer methods are commonplace in helping designers. So what is it about Durham's approach that puts their computer methods out in front? Well, in, in Durham, for highway design, we build a computer model of the new alignment in its, in its existing surroundings. From ground or aerial surveys of the existing ground, we prepare a model which is stored in the computer, and then we prepare a model of the new road. Splines are one of the most important steps in the alignment. In this, this establishes the center line of the road. As you see it in the background, the center line as it is curving away, on the plan we will fix several location points and between them there will be the cubic equations which form the spline curves. One of the mathematicians on Gordon Crane's staff who's played a major role in the development of the spline technique is Stuart Hetherington. The design engineer knows the points through which he wants the road to go and he has these points marked on his plans or drawings. Uh, by taking off the values of the coordinates, the eastings and northings of these points, he can feed these points into the computer. A typical series of points would look something like this. And the computer uses this as its input data to create a cubic spline between each of these location points. The line which it then gets has the special spline property that at each of these location points and therefore throughout the whole length of the curve there is continuity of first and second derivatives. This cubic spline which is created is called the horizontal alignment. The engineer doesn't need the general form of the equation of these uh, splines or these cubic equations. What he needs is information at a considerable number of points uh, between them uh, and these points are taken off at equal intervals and the engineer calls them change points. And here we see the amount of information which the engineer gets from feeding in simply three location points. At each of the change intervals or change points he requires the easting and northing 
and these points are used to locate the road when it is actually being constructed. The bearing, which is derived from the first derivative of the spline, is used in calculating further design lines such as curb lines. The radius of curvature is used to de uh, detect the bendiness of the road and this is derived from the second derivative. The third derivative of the spline gives us the rate of change of lateral acceleration. The design engineer may find by looking at his printout that the alignment is not quite what he wants so he will vary his alignment simply by moving the location points, the coordinates of the location points, by small amounts and until he is satisfied that he's got the right line. Once they have accepted the main alignment, all the other details needed in the road design can be computed from it. Calculations from the cubic splines produce curb lines, grass verges and even the lines where cuttings and embankments must begin. It all starts from the location points and apart from the splines, the computations involve other information taken from the numerically stored ground model. The design engineer can call for a drawing of his scheme at any stage. It's in this way that he can examine his computer model and compare it with the maps on which he based his original design. But nevertheless, the central idea remains the use of the cubic spline. The essence of a cubic spline alignment is that it gives a flowing alignment. You might well say, uh, why use splines rather than higher order polynomials? And there are two reasons for this. The first is that uh, the engineer requires as few changes of curvature for the constraints he imposes as possible. With higher order polynomials, the probability of this kinking effect uh, is increased. The second reason is that the cubic spline is the lowest order of equation which gives continuity of first and second derivatives and hence bearing and curvature and this is another requirement of the engineer. Well the splines they use at Durham and the techniques they use for calculating them are exactly the same as you've seen in unit 9. Let's refresh our memory as to what's involved. Here I have five points and we want to join these points by four separate curves. And we want these curves to be cubics. And we want the cubics to join smoothly at these points. Now how do we find the equation of these curves? Well, we could express each cubic in terms of its coefficients, but this turns out to be rather nasty. The trick instead is to introduce these m's. These are the second derivatives of the cubic at each of these points. We then express each cubic in terms of its x's, y's, and m's. And so we've automatically got continuity of second derivative at these points. Well, how do we calculate these five m values? Well, we use the further information that the derivatives, the first derivatives of the spline, are continuous at these points. So the, the slope of the curve at this point is the same as the slope at that point and similarly here and here. Well, the S's are expressed in terms of the M's and so this gives us three equations. We need two more. Well, if I also know the N derivatives, alpha and beta, then this gives me five equations. It turns out the linear equations in these five M's and so we can solve for the M's and we know the equations of the whole spline. Well, that's one way of calculating a spline where I knew the values of alpha and beta. If I don't know these, then another kind of spline can be obtained by assuming that the second derivative at the ends are zero. Similarly, at this end, second derivative, zero. We call this kind of spline a natural spline. And we'll see later how they're used in road design. Well, that's how we calculate splines. Let's see now how splines react when we move one of these location points. Well, there's the spline. And there's the end derivatives. 
Notice by moving the end point, we're not affecting the rest of the spline very much. This is the local property of splines. Notice, the closer the points, the more the effect spreads throughout the spline. The local property is also affected by altering the x-coordinates. Well, that's how mathematical cubic spines behave. I expect you've been wondering why we sent you a length of piano wire. Well, here's why. I've joined these five points with piano wire. And you can see that the wire is free to slide in these locating bridges. The natural position of the wire is very similar to the cubic splines you've just seen. And you can see that they react in a very similar way to the diagram you've just seen. My engineering friends tell me that provided I keep the curvature of the wire small, it doesn't matter where I put these location points, the equation of the cu this curve is approximately a cubic. And further, because the wire is continuous and has no kinks, then its first and second derivatives are continuous. And so it's automatically a spline. Another thing, look at the ends. They're free. And so the ends are straight lines. And so the second derivative is zero. And so we've got a natural spline. This physical spline, piano wire, is the key to practical road design. And when I was up at Durham, Gordon Crane showed me how the piano wire was used in the design of the road that you saw earlier. Well, this is a plan of the scheme. And as you can see, this is the existing road. The extents of the scheme are marked on the plan by these two red lines, one at the west and one at the east and they're the end constraints. The designer would initially locate his road at these points. The problems now facing the designer is how to best locate the road with reference to the existing road. We have a junction here and obviously we want to follow the old road to a certain extent. For engineering considerations with the line, we must be near this road junction. We must also keep to the south of this boundary wall to the estate. We get a smooth curve. It's also preferable that we leave the existing road open to maintain traffic flow during construction. But if we keep as close as we can to this road, then it will minimise the amount of land that has to be purchased. Coming to this end of the scheme, there are fewer engineering constraints and perhaps the road should possibly follow close to the existing road. We could take an alternative to the north or to the south and the wire will take up the smooth path. But from a knowledge of the land, this area is quite high to the north and would involve us in quite a lot of cutting and to the south to maintain an even gradient would require embankments, possibly cause drainage problems. And the best solution appears to be close to the existing road, which will minimize the amount of land required. This then produces a nice smooth flowing line and this illustrates one of the advantages of the spline technique.
compared to a straight, whereas if we put a straight alignment through this area, which is undulating rural countryside, we get a much more ple pleasing line by having this smooth curve just blending into its surroundings. There is a further point to consider at the ends of the alignment. As you can see, the free natural spline does not follow in the required direction to merge into the existing road. The curvature is zero at this point, but the direction isn't satisfactory. To overcome this, it is necessary to introduce a penultimate location point, which can adjust the position of the spline so that the direction is completely satisfactory to merge into the existing road and the curvature remains zero at the last location point. A further point of detail before the engineer can record the location points is that he must physically check the curvature of the alignment. Having satisfied himself of this, he must finally ensure that all the engineering constraints are satisfied, the end conditions are adequate, giving continuity where he's running into the existing road, and that he has a smooth flowing alignment and then, being completely satisfied of this, he can go ahead and record the, the points. It's at this stage that the transformation from a design drawing to a computer model takes place. It's a crucial stage where the physical spline, piano wire on a map, is to be replaced by the mathematical spline, cubics, in the computer model. The coordinates of these points must be measured and input to a spline program. And we have already seen splines on the computer. It's the location points which are the key to the whole scheme because it's through these points the engineer controls his design. It's all very well seeing location points on a map. We thought it would be nice to complete the cycle and see the role they play out on the road itself. We've laid out some location points and chainage points for you to see. The big ones, the one here, one further up and one way away, are the location points which the engineer uses to input to the computer in order to calculate the cubic spline. The small white ones are the chainage points which are required by the contractor to construct the road. The site engineer needs the information at the chainage points so that he can locate the center line of the road. The bearings are used in calculating the offset of the curb lines and the verges. The curvature is used in t uh, finding the tilt of the road or the super elevation. And this information is all derived just from these location points from the cubic splines. The link between the mathematics of cubic splines and road design was so useful that we thought you'd like to have a go at designing a route. Well, here is your map, a copy of your map, and my effort at designing a road to replace this existing road which goes through the village. You can see that my route starts here at point A with the, at the bridge, goes up past the hospital, you, making use of the existing road at this here, and if we provided a junction here, we provide good access to the factory for heavy vehicles. It remains to locate the rest of this road. Well, I decided to choose these two location points. I'll show you how I got these. I chose this one so that the road went to the north of the village, using up a lot of new land, however. And this point to make sure that the end direction of the road agreed with that of my new road. Well, we can adjust these points slightly to get the best route, and I thought the best point was about here. Okay, well, that's my route. Well, as you can see, with, with any route, uh, there's going to be a lot of environmental considerations. I don't want you to get too involved in these. Instead, I want you to concentrate on the computational problems that are involved. Well, what's next? Next, I would visually check the curvature of the road. Well, as you can see, it's quite straight along here. But at this point here, the curvature, I can check it w against this standard curve, it's uh, less than our allowed minimum. And so this point, we may have to bring south slightly to reduce the curvature at this point. The local effect 
of spines means that we might be able to do this without affecting the rest of the road too much. Well, we next mark the location points. I've already done this, and we, th we then can dispense with the wire altogether and the bridges. So let's do that. Okay. Well, let's uh, next read off these location points. I'm going to use this grid. For example, this location point here to the north of the village, it's on the x equals 800 line, and this is y equals 500. So let's just read off that to find accuracy. This point here is y equals 540. As I say, we may have to reduce that point slightly. Well, I've recorded those data points and we can now go off to the computer and use the discrete approximations package. Let's call for that. And I'll type in option 7 and get a listing of the data that I ended earlier. There it is, there's my coordinates. And next we'll have a look at the road that corresponds to that data option three for that. And here's the outline results. First the length of the road in meters and the minimum radius of curvature. You see that the radius of curvature is too small, it's 153 and it's at that position that we were a bit worried about, the x equals 800 mark. The minimum radius of curvature allowed is in fact 230 meters. So we'll edit the data. Let's do that. Option 16. And we'll replace that coordinate by 485. And now terminate the editing. And let's have a look at this new road. Outline road results. The road a little shorter than before. Ah, the minimum radius of curvature exactly 230. Well, I chose that y coordinate so that that would be the case. We're right on the design limit there. The Maximum rate of uh, change of lateral acceleration is OK. And we can tabulate the full road results using option 3. We tabulate the road at equal distances along the x axis. And here we're tabulating every 100 meters. Well, having tabulated, we could plot this, or we could ask the computer to plot it, and we could send you a copy of your route. Well, here's my route. And you can see that this new route, we brought this point south slightly, but you can see now it goes through the tennis courts, very close to the housing estate, and goes through the wood. Well, I don't think it's the best route. What we'd like you to do is to design a couple of alternative routes and decide which you think is the best route. simulation of a computer terminal system.